Thanks, Ivan. Uh, I hope, yes, you are all awake. I can. I'm not, so please, please be kind. I'm going to talk you about the BDLB, it's the French word for Base de Données Nationale des Bâtiments, the French Open Database of Buildings, uh, all built thanks to force 4 g open data, and credit funds. <laughs> so, so, works. We all have heard about digital twins. It's not digital twins, but it looks like. It's nice, it's beautiful, and this helps a lot to sell the project to stakeholders, so being 3D is cool. Uh, I'm quickly done, I'm uh, a long time uh, GIS guy, felt into Force4G software since maybe 15 years now. I've been uh, the OSGO president, local chapter president of France, and the new president is in the room, thanks. And I've been a QGIS funder at start, and then a contributor, and uh, yeah, and now I'm working in the CSTB, that's the French Scientific Institute for uh, um, building buildings, you know, making construction norms, standards, monitor some buildings, do some, doing some very, very nice new buildings, doing global life cycle assessments to know how much CO2 water is used by uh, the construction and the life of a, a building. And we are doing fun stuff. We are burning buildings, just to be sure they burn. We are also making some artificial rain and snow and all those things and testing solar panels. It's very wide. It's also a service provider. Uh, we are testing equipment for producers. So it can be a window, it can be a roof, whatever. We are helping the French government to uh, lead the public policies on buildings. It's very wide. It can be risk assessment, it can be environmental policies. And we are also doing 3D and BIM stuff because you have to know where you put a valve and a window in a, in a new building and an existing one. So we have some proprietary softwares in Beam. Uh, it's going open source too, because we don't sell this that much, probably. I don't know. But we are now going to di digital strategies. And GIS, it's a bit new to the CSTB, and I'm there since one year only. And uh, we are doing some great stuff. We'll see this. Why build a database of all the buildings? It's pretty obvious, but the real urgency is climate change. This is the real driver. So one third of our carbon emissions, at least in France, are linked to building and housing and building construction, mainly. Uh, that's, that was my great learning one year ago. If you build a building, you use it for 100 years, 50 to 70% of the CO2 was emitted when building it by the concrete, mainly. So the real uh, challenge we have is not to build new performance buildings, is to deal with the existing and rest of retrofit them all. And you all saw, have seen what's happening during the summer when we have some heat waves. So any kind of policies will be assessed by a reference data set. How do, do we do this? Because the French government does not have an official identifier for our buildings. And we cross multiple data sources. So the first one are the building footprints from the IJN, the, the Geographic Institute. And the second main source is from the tax incomes. They know everything about us. That's crazy. And we also have the energy consumption from the gas seller, the electricity seller and producers. We have information from the performance uh, analysis. When you sell a house, you have to uh, evaluate if it's a good or not good housing. And a lot of things like risk and uh, know if it's a social housing or not. We cross this, we, pr we also, that's the first part, we build a database. We try to predict missing value, so we are not just interested, like in digital, digital twins, to the 3D building. We're interested in, okay, more on its characteristics. 
that's the main point. So I'm a t in a team of data scientists and they are predicting missing values and all this. The main goal at start was to build application for the public audience to help them take decisions to go faster retrofitting the houses. Uh, this is the first application we've made. It's MapLibre, it's uh, vector tiles, it's Angular, and the idea is to really simply find your house, see that it's in, not in a good shape from the energetic point of view. There are a lot of more characteristics like the year of construction, the number of uh, housing in your building, um, what heater do you have? Is it insulated? What window can you have? Uh, do you have some heat wave risk in this kind of building? And we are uh, trying to estimate the new performance diagnosis method that we have that was introduced recently. It's also reactive. Uh, we also have a lab, internal lab, and for customers, where we have a lot more information, all the 400 fields we have in the database. And um, we have statistic uh, layers too, to explore uh, all we can publish after that as uh, new indicators. Some examples. We also have a set of advanced services. It's all REST APIs. Uh, uh, thanks to Geo API, we'll, Python, Python Geo API will probably we will go OGC fairly quickly. Uh, we have authentication, Python notebooks to help data scientists do their job and handle the database fastly, SQL access, and a full QGIS uh, GIS environment. We have also another target, the social housing landlords, the guys who rent apartments uh, for low prices. And they have uh, dedicated applications to, under, to know where they have buildings, how much, the state of those buildings, and take decisions to invest or not, or destroy some building sometime, sometimes. It was funded the last three years thanks to the GoRenov Go project. It was all coming from the carbon pre permits and trading market, you know, those funds that are uh, necessary, made ma 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 mandatory by the law. Uh, those are all the partners we have. So the first one of the, are the government and institutions, then all the data providers, uh, the social housing landlords, and the, the one that, that had to pay. They have no choice, they had to pay for this. So there are oil servers. <coughs> Possible use cases. Uh, so many here will go really fast like this. One real point we, have, we had last week is we will have to cut gas this autumn. We will have shortcuts. What are the biggest consumers? And we are able to answer that. That's crazy. 1% uh, of the buildings are using one third of the gas. And it's not good news for public equipment. It's swimming pools. It's stadiums, it's ice skating rinks. So, let's see. There are a lot of more use cases like circular economy, urban planning with life cycle analysis at a city scale. And we had a few challenges to face, so there's no building definitions. We started quickly. Let's not talk about this. Let's just put data on buildings, on footprint, footprint of buildings and then we will improve really early, really fast. The core data sources from the tax ministry are partially open data, and we obtained the first clearance to have them all in France, so this is why we could build the database. Uh, the French Geographic Institute, it's really nice, it footprints as all on the other, other countries, and it's open data. It's not totally in line with the tax informations. And we have the street address addresses. What changed four years ago in France is that we have a real nice centralized uh, open 
reference data set now, and we can really use this. First, what's happening in the other countries? This is our model, Swiss. They've done this since 2015. Really pragmatic, really working. We are just trying to copy this so that we don't do a post reconstruction of database, but we go toward the real reference data set. We've seen some nice things last year in Force4G with the 3D bag uh, tools. They, uh, with LiDAR, they can reconstruct any building on the whole country, and we are starting to do the same with the LiDAR that are coming in France. And it works out of the box, really nice. And we have Dubai, that is a code, mandatory code for each building. Yeah, lots of more examples. What do we have in it? Um, about 30 million buildings. This is uh, the age of the building, the construction date. We have 23 million, sorry, 41 million street addresses, 90 million of uh, cadastral parcels, more than 400 properties. This is the repartition of the information. So we have information from the tax data source. Those are the performance diagnosis. We only have on 12% of the housings, the buildings, sorry. How did we do this? This is the first 4G point, so tools. Thanks, two minutes. Okay. Uh, really early, we did often. Don't take them much time on modeling. Address matching, it's quite a nightmare, but we succeeded. Uh, infer. Well, this is scientific stuff, maybe for questions. I'm going fast. It's over or more? What? Uh, 30 minutes. Away. Oh, cool. I can slow down. <laughs> yeah. Any question on scientific part? Eight minutes. Any question on scientific part? Just the, the idea is that the text information on the cadastral parcel are not geolocalized and the buildings into the parcel can be numerous, up to 50 buildings, and we have to guess which one uh, has the information with the, the surface declared and uh, all the information. So we try to do this, and it works in most cases, but we have edge cases, of, uh, of course. I'm not going in that part because I don't master this part. I'm not again, we made this. We made it easy to reuse. So the first format, it went open data four months ago, uh, were GeoPackage, SQL, PostGIS export. It is the most downloaded. That's a real learning for me. 99% of the downloads are the massive SQL export. It's surprising. CSV export for maybe S3 users, I don't know. Almost never. Never download it. In France, uh, PostGIS and QGIS are the de facto standard from the numbers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so you download, you unzip, you have this QGIS project with the all the addresses of the links between the buildings and the addresses, the buildings, open street map players, and then you do whatever you want. We also tried to collect a lot of feedback with the users, thanks to the data.gov.fr platform, which is really nice. We can discuss with the users. We can declare a re reuse application. So the web application you've seen is directly linked to the data. And external users also do this, so we know what, how the, the data is used. And we have a GitLab, public GitLab for documentation, ticketing, and uh, more questions. That helped us to focus really quickly f on the pain point of use, using this data. And we go fast, we iterate, we improve. The next version is coming in one month. We had a lot to do with new building definition. Physical buildings is a level. A real building is the, the thing that the tax ministry knows about. It's mainly an entrance and a stair. We don't have the geographic separation inside the building when, where you have a, a wall. The phys physical building is what is interesting us the most at CSTB to model uh, energy things on buildings. And currently, all the data is mainly at the building group. 
something into the cadastral parcel that is not really well defined. So we have to address this. And we address this by starting a real data model, just not one huge building table with many things inside of it. And we are discussing now this thing in a normalizing group in France. And obviously the Swiss model was a huge help. Uh, we had issues with not keeping the footprints where we had no tax information. So now this three comes from the user feedback. We had them. The other bit was to go open data fast, really fast. This is the best way to advertise the use of the, the service. And premium services will probably be the way to fund this because it's the tragedy of the common. I know at least five organisms trying to rebuild the database in France. So we, nobody has the means to afford this. Uh, we have a really nice open government uh, initiative to do some uh, startup, state startup to go fastly to this uh, identifier of buildings. It will be a great, great thing. The commercial service, I'm going a bit fast. We are almost over. No? That's okay. It was over my conduct. Yeah, thanks. Um, we will provide services to experts. We already have REST APIs uh, with authentic authentication, and we do things so that startups that are working on buildings can just feed with the DOS database. Uh, and we are also doing service to, now we are able to really understand those data. We are helping the social landlords to handle their own information system and GIS because they mostly are still Excel or paper based. So there's a challenge for them. Um, skipping this one. Uh, this is the predictions, machine learning predictions and statistic regressions of the real performance values, real, because the the sen temperature sensor is the di a diagnosis that is really biased because it's selling houses, so it's human thing. And we try to um, predict it on all the buildings. The techie part, infrastructure. We have three bare metal server in OVH to, to compute the data, the fabric. Uh, it's mainly Postgres, JupyterLab, Spark for massive parallel computing, and uh, Redis plus ad hoc, it's a French tool to geocode, that are doing most of the computation. The database is huge, seven terabytes, 48 CPUs, almost 200 gigas of RAM. When I saw that one year ago, I was really like a child <laughs> coming to <the> playground. <laughs> yeah. We also have a cloud infrastructure for the production application. Uh, it's hosted in scale away, so that we are compliant with the RGPD. Yeah, cool. The backend, which made it possible, it's really cool, Postgres, Postgres and Postgres. On top of it, you have table views and uh, functions, and you make directly your REST APIs, and you can also discuss with the applications to get some information from the token. Uh, key cloak, gravity for the API, quick key cloak for the SSO, uh, and DB roles and role level security policies in Postgres, so nice. Uh, future roadmap, it's improving fast, 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 but, uh, well, Better duck. It's, it's obvious. We have some duck, but we, all want, we, we need a data catalog. We need stability on the core model. So this is really important so that the identifiers don't change and the data model don't change too often. So it's the target for V10 at the end of the year. And a lot of nerd face, uh, nerdy stuff. So uh, nerd face. Geoparket export to uh, deflate the database and I've seen some cool stuff, flat geobus, OGC API. Rebuilding 3D volumes, this is QGIS with our current leader things and this is 
what the Dutch libraries from 3 bag do as a output, and it's so well working. And lots, lots of things. So, yes, please follow us. We have a Twitter account for the, for the team. Uh, that GitLab public tracker is mainly in French currently. We'll see if we conquer the world someday. And uh, thanks for listening. Ready for questions. Thank you.